Switzerland is amazing. And because we enjoyed it so much, I am excited to share and maybe even help some of you out. I personally always watch videos about the place that I'm traveling to. So I hope that by sharing our experiences, we can help some of you out. So sit back and enjoy. So we began our journey by driving like nine hours from the Netherlands to Montreux, our first stop. When we arrived in Montreux, we had a beautiful view on the Rocher de Ney, if I pronounce that right. We walked on the boulevard and enjoyed a nice view while we ate delicious pizza on this Italian restaurant there. day two we were still in Montreux. We visited Castle Chillon which cost us like 15 francs per person and although it was nice to see and we did enjoy it, if you want to save some money just walk outside the gates and you'll see a lot too. There's this beautiful place next to the castle where you can relax. Also in front of the castle there is a mountain bunker. Switzerland made a lot of these around the second world war in case of invasion. We did not visit there but afterwards I was a bit disappointed in the fact that we did not visit. So maybe you will. Please let us know how it was if you did. We then went on to drive to Oshinensee, which is like a two hour drive. At the last part we went with this train that you park your car on called Koppenstein Autoverlaat. As someone who had never done that before it was a pretty fun experience. So through this mountain tunnel we went and then arrived in Kenderstag. From there it was a cable cart or a hike up the mountain to get to Oshinensee. We hiked up and it took us about 40 minutes, like 4.3 kilometers one way. It's pretty steep though so expect, especially in nice weather, to be tired afterwards. Also there's a lot of tourism there, since there's even this car that brings you up. We had some french fries and a bratwurst with bread for like 19 Swiss francs which was very welcome after that hike. So the tourism has its positive sides also. After that we went back down and we went to the first hotel. It was called Silberhorn Hotel in Lauterbrunnen. We had a very nice room with views to the Staubach waterfall. So the next day after Frühstück, which is the German word for breakfast, we went towards the Staubach Falls. There's a very touristic kind of hike there and it is very busy. You will end up with a sort of behind waterfall view from the mountain. But I said sort of. It's not really like that. We were kind of disappointed to be honest. The views from that point are nothing special. So if you really want to see the Stauwach Falls, just admire it from down there. Then we were off to the Trummelbach Falls. We paid 12 Swiss francs for entering per person. And there's this big elevator going up there when you go through the entrance. You won't miss it. I recommend going up there with the elevator and walking down to see everything. Save that energy for a nice hike. Also, it is very slippery there, so take some good shoes with you. You don't want to fall. After you are done walking at Trummelbach Falls and you still have some energy left, we finished with a very steep hike up the mountain, which was pretty difficult and I see myself as kind of experienced. 
The view was very cool though. The Staubach waterfall begins there and from there falls down the mountain. Also, you can hike all the way up to Murren or Winteregg if you like, but we didn't do that. After one and a half hours of hiking, we had enough and we went back down to eat. Also, in my humble opinion, a nice warm bath after you hike the whole day is very nice and recommended, even if it's just one time. The next day we bought the Jungfrau Travel Pass, which I recommend, but keep watching if you want to visit the top of Europe as well, because then you need to know my tip. And we also bought some groceries for hikes and the rest of the day. I've heard some people say that Switzerland is overwhelmingly expensive, but when I got there, yeah, it was a little more expensive than the Netherlands, but not by that much. So as for groceries, don't be scared to buy some. We then went up to Murren. We skipped Winter Egg though, because of time. Murren is a very cute little village and we felt most relaxed there. It's just sightseeing though, since there's not a whole lot to do up there. If you don't want to jump off a cliff with a parachute that is. Do some research beforehand what you want to do up there. After that we went to Interlaken and we went for a boat ride, which you can hire for like 75 francs per hour. That was a lot of fun and if you can spare it, it's worth it. You can also go up to Harder Kum, which is this house at the top of the mountain in Interlaken. We didn't go there though, but it is included in both the Jungfrau Travel Pass and the Top of Europe Pass. After our boat trip, we went to our hotel in Grindelwald. So Grindelwald first day, we left the car up there because the steep road was a bit of a hassle. Instead we went up and down with the cable car, which goes up from Grindelwald city and all the way up to Grindelwald first top. Keep in mind that this cable car only goes on until 5 o'clock or 1700 in the afternoon. The last one down is half an hour later at 1730. We went to the Eiger Express which is also included in the pass and this took us all the way up. By the way, this was one of the most smooth experiences we had with cable cars. This thing is amazing. We then chilled on for a bit at the reserve lake called Fall Bodensee, which is beautiful. Up there you are almost above the clouds. Have a look. We even went up to the top of Europe after that since we upgraded our travel pass to the top of Europe travel pass. Which only adds the last piece of the pass, the top of Europe, but then unlimited. If you already have the pass, then it is only a 49 Swiss francs upgrade. We upgraded from the Jungfrau travel pass, but it isn't usually an option. So make sure to choose which pass you want beforehand. So that way we went to the top of Europe for only 49 Swiss francs per person. And I thought it was only possible for 200 Swiss francs per person. We forgot that the last cable card goes back up at 1700, so we were only there for like half an hour that day, sadly. If you want to know how long you need to spend up there, it's cool to see, but after an hour you've basically seen everything. I won't spoil everything, but I think it's a bit overrated to be honest. The ice part was very cool though, but the rest just seems more than it is really. Except a few of course. That was most definitely a wow factor. After that it's just how long you want to spend shopping and how long you want to spend outside in the snow. So the next day we went to Grindelwald first. There is this beautiful lookout point at the walkway next to the mountain. But keep in mind it is only possible to look down if there is no clouds. So check the live cams on the website first. I'll include the links in the description, so you don't go there for nothing. I definitely recommend that you visit up there. Also there is a restaurant for if you want something to drink or eat. 
They made this rich walkway, which is really cool. If you don't like looking down on heights, I think this is not for you. After that, we went back up to the top of Europe via the Eiger Express once more and stayed for two and a half hours. Make sure you bring some sunscreen though. With the sun and the snow, you're gonna tan really fast, but also burn very fast. As for clothing, we went with a body warmer and a hoodie, which was even too hot, even though it is only two degrees Celsius up there. But if you're going uphill, you won't even notice it anymore. I saw people without a t-shirt going up there, so you really won't need your winter jacket unless you're planning on standing still at the top. But if you're someone who is always cold, then be sure to pack some extra clothing, of course. We went back down the Eiger Express to Grindelwald to shop for some more souvenirs at the station, which is less expensive than the top of Europe shops, where they overprice everything. The last day we went to Arnisee, a very cute little lake on a mountain with amazing views. Just all in all a very nice place to hang out, relax and enjoy Switzerland. There is a catch though. For someone who has not done very steep small cable cards before, I did not, it can be pretty scary. This lake can be reached from two sides, Inchi or Amstek. If you don't mind the heights then you can go for Amstek. But I parked at Amstek and looked up and decided it was not for me. So we went further to Inchi and although it was still very high and steep, I thought it was better. So again, not for people who are afraid of heights, but the amazing place is most definitely worth it. Also worth mentioning is that after this we went to our final hotel, which is called the Hutton Hotel Husky Lodge. It was a very nicely done and cute hotel and at winter time you can even do sleigh rides there. This was my trip to Switzerland, hope you found this video useful and if you go there I hope you have an amazing time like we did. Thank you so much for watching and see you on the next video.